As I'm sure many of you know, in order to herald the release of Age of Empires 4, Microsoft has announced that they will be releasing definitive editions of the previous games in the series. While this is amazing news for the entire Age of Empires 2 community, there are many of us who do have our doubts. While Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition definitely has the potential to become one of the best remasters in the entire RTS genre, there is one thing that Microsoft and the developers really need to get right in order for this game to take off. This remaster absolutely must have a good lobby system. Now, I really want this game to be a success, because after all, my YouTube channel is based off of Age of Empires 2. Because of this, instead of sitting idly by and hoping that somebody somewhere comes up with a good idea, I am making this video as an open letter to you, Microsoft the publisher of the game, and to you, Forgotten Empires, the developers of this game, in order to give my pitch for how you can design an amazing lobby system for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. And so, let's get started by looking at some previous systems in order to see what will really work well. The way I see it, we have three primary examples. The first, and the oldest example, is Voobly. Now, as I'm sure you're already aware, Voobly is a third-party external game room and game lobby system. What this means is that if you want to join a multiplayer lobby, you open up Voobly first, and then it will launch the Conquerors once you've started the game. Because of this, once you're in a game room, you have a lot of settings to choose from. You have a settings menu with tabs for advanced settings, general settings, restoring the game, spectator settings, watching or recording, and on top of that, once you actually launch the game, you have all of the normal game room settings that you would expect in order to customize your match. This means there are a lot of features that are very important for the professional and expert scene, but they're not all in one place, and it's really hard to understand the concept that Voobly and Age of Empires are two different programs, so it is definitely not very noob-friendly. Also, while there are a lot of good lobby browser features to sort out ratings, you can't really sort what type of game you want. So, for example, you cannot sort based on game mode really very much, you can't sort based on map, you cannot sort based on game speed, which are all features that many people want. This is because, again, these specific features are created by the game and not by the Voobly client. This means that while Voobly has all the tools that the professional scene needs in order to make Age of Empires 2 thrive, it does not have the tools needed in order to allow new players to join and allow Age of Empires 2 to grow. On the other hand, the second main example is Age of Empires 2 HD Edition, which merges the client part of Voobly with the actual Age of Empires 2 game, which means it is a lot simpler to use. For example, if you want to create a game room, all you have to do is click on multiplayer, click create game, and boom, you're in a game room. And from there, you can get right into playing the game, which is great for new players because it's really simple and easy to understand. To start off, this means the lobby browser has the potential to be superior, because you can filter games based on game mode, map type, etc. However, one major Voobly lobby browser feature that HD lacks is the ability to check who or who is not online. Now, while it's probably not that important for casual players, if you are a serious player, or maybe an expert player, or you're a caster like Zero Empires, T90, or Mim TV, this creates a very strong problem, because this player list allows you to locate potential opponents who are on the same skill set, or far more importantly, it allows game casters to find expert players so they can cast expert games, which allows the expert and professional scene to absolutely thrive. On top of this, while both Voobly and HD do have different perks to their lobby, when it comes to the game room, the only perk that HD has is that it's easy to use. This is because each game room lacks many features that Voobly has. For example, there are no spectator delays, the host of the game doesn't have the power to control spectator settings, spectators cannot join the game after it starts, and most importantly, spectators take up a player's spot. Also, a lot of general settings, such as passwords, how to rate the game, or the game version, can only be changed by recreating the lobby, and of course you don't have hidden sieves options, and you cannot view player profiles straight from the game. This lack of spectator, profile, and other quality of life features means that for casual players and expert players alike, you really do not have the control that you need for Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. 
On top of this, because the game and lobby portion in HD is merged into one program, there's no technical need to have a persistent game room that lasts during an entire match. However, the lack of such a persistent game room means that you can't implement any spectator joins after a game has already started, and you can't go back to the game room once you're finished, instead you just go back to the lobby browser. Again, while this feature doesn't seem to be that important on the surface, in reality it is very important for the professional scene, which remember Forgotten Empires, you need to be good if you want this game to survive, and it's also frustrating even for us somewhat casual players to have to recreate a lobby each time we want to to play again with friends. It's just not the best technical design. While we're on this topic, in Age of Empires 1 Definitive Edition, you have a similar lobby and game browser system to that as HD, in that it does miss many of these important features. It still misses a persistent lobby system, it still misses many spectator settings, but there are some key new things that are important. First, you can check player profiles to send messages and player invites, and while it's not that great of a system because Xbox Live is a pain to deal with, and it's of course not nearly as detailed as Foobly, it's still a step in the right direction. Also, you have a LAN option, which was sorely missed in Age of Empires 2 HD, and thirdly and most importantly, you have the option to host your own dedicated servers. Now, before I talk about this, I will admit that I am kind of going on some rabbit trails here, but I think it's still very important for me to give a concrete foundation for what I think you need to do in order to make this lobby system as good as it can be. And so, I need to take a detour right now to explain what this means when it concerns dedicated servers. Basically, Age of Empires 2 is played via player-to-player, -player, where each computer connects to every other. Now this does have some pros, because in theory you don't need Microsoft servers to be up and running, so it is nice for that. However, in large games there can be up to 36 connections between players, and if only one connection is bad, the game will slow down and maybe even desync. However, there's a far better way to connect to other players around the world, and this is to utilize dedicated servers. Now to get started, the way I see it, this is kind of simplified, but there are basically two types of dedicated servers. The first type is the system that you have the option to use with Age of Empires 1 Definitive Edition. Basically, the host of the game connects to every other player and sends information back and forth, acting like a central hub. However, the host player does need a pretty decent computer and internet connection in order to run the entire game, and if the host leaves the game, the connection is severed between all the other players and the game is lost. I think it's still important to have this option because, again, it does not require to have a third party such as Microsoft to have servers, but we do need to keep in mind that it is dependent upon the players. The other type of dedicated server is where there is one central server for every game room that does not act as a player, but instead just runs the game. This type is expensive to maintain, but it's very good because if the host leaves, the connection is not severed for all players, and of course each player only has to have one connection, and if that connection goes bad, it's not the end of the game. In my opinion, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition needs to have dedicated servers for the professional scene, and I'm sure that you already know this. However, I think if possible it should still include the option to use player to player, so that if the dedicated servers stop working for some intentional or unintentional reason, players can still enjoy the masterpiece of a game that's going to be created. This leads us to something else that is very important for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, and this concerns spectators. Now, in HD, each spectator takes up a game room slot. What this means is that in the player-to-player -player connection, one of the eight players is a spectator. Now, technically, there's no reason you couldn't have eight players and eight spectators, but this would create an enormous amount of connections and inevitable connection issues, so it's just a bad idea to try to do that. However, the way Vubly does it is actually by using a sort of dedicated server technology where basically the host sends information to a spectator server, which then sends information to each spectator. I think this is how it works anyway. If Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition has dedicated servers, you could basically do it the same way, where the main game server sends information to a secondary spectator server. And now that we know all this technical knowledge, I think we're ready to jump into my pitch for how the designers of Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition should design the lobby system. 
So to start off, I want to say this is an idea. The concepts can be used in different forms, but I think the concepts are what is most important. So to start off, let's just say we have the classic main menu image, because of course, you know, it's nostalgia and you don't want to ignore that. <coughs> Once you click on multiplayer, you get several options, not unlike Age of Empires 2 HD. In fact, my idea is basically a modified version of Age of Empires 2 HD, so let's just work from this assumption. Here you can see the options to join a dedicated server lobby browser, a LAN lobby browser, or a player-to-player -player lobby browser. Sure, for the first three minutes, a ten-year-old tries to use it, they might not understand it, but maybe add little tooltips when you cursor over each one to say, hey! dedicated servers are recommended, or something like that. Next, the lobby browser should incorporate elements of all three versions we have. It should have the game filters on the right, and the game rooms on the left, just like HD and Age of Empires 1 Definitive Edition. However, because we really do need to show game rooms that are currently in progress, we need to add a few more filters. I'd suggest having them up on the right like the others. You could have the option to view only busy games, only ready games, or all games. And in the lobby browser, just dark shade all of the in progress games, and maybe add a title above it that says in progress, or something like that. Also, I'd suggest that you add another column on the right that shows online players that are friends, in-game, and waiting, with options to right-click their names to view their profile, their game room, etc., just like in Vupu. I would suggest that in order to make it fit, yet still look nice, that you put both the player's menu and the game filters in scroll wheel boxes to signify that there are more options here. Also, just like in AoE 1 DE, you could put the option to create a game on the bottom of the screen so that you can host your own lobbies with little difficulty. I think that's a good design for the lobby browser, don't you? And so let's move into the actual game room, which is where I think the most important changes and improvements are made. This is because we're again trying to combine both the in-game features of HD and the pre-game features of Vubli into one fluid, easy to use, yet full of features design. To start off, when you click on Create Game, let's make there to be a pop-up menu with options to set visibility between Public, Invite, and Friends, set the ranking on or off, set a password, to allow spectators, and to set your region. Now, unlike Age of Empires 2 HD, these options can all be changed later. Next, I think that you could move and resize a few things to make room for some new additions. Let's just start by making the chat box a little bit smaller, and move some game options a bit higher and others lower, and let's move the players just a bit higher to make room for some other things. Next, let's add another player box, but this time for spectators. Because they're just spectators, they're not that important, guys. So they don't need to take up as much room as the players, and maybe just make their box scrollable so that you can fit a bunch of people in there and have it still look nice. While we're talking about the players, let's talk about their powers. First, let's make it so that way when the host right-clicks on one of the players or spectators, he can switch host, he can kick the person, ban the person, mute the person, you know, just give the host some good old-fashioned mod powers. Let's also make it so that everybody can right-click on a player to send a private message, friend request, or view player profile. Now, I know this does require some Xbox integration, but Microsoft, if you want this game and later Age of Empires 4 to be successful, you'll tell your Xbox division that better integration features need to be a priority, because the current system you have is difficult and slow to use. I apologize for how hard-handed this sounds, but this is for your benefit. This is how you make this game amazing, and I think we can both agree on how important that is. Now that we've made some room for spectators, let's add a few buttons on the right to give the host access to very important game settings. First, with these lower buttons, let's put some options from Vubli, which is to hide sieves, and an option from Age of Empires 1 DE, which is having the host to run a dedicated server, for if you're not running this game room in the official dedicated server lobby. Next, maybe we can place the next buttons under the game settings, and we'll have the first one of these called Room Settings, that lets you change visibility, set required ranking or turn rating on and off, change the game password, or change region. Basically, a lot of these settings you chose up when you created the game room. The next new button will say Restore Game. Notice that we move this away from the lobby creation scene in HD to the options like in Vubli. This lets you see what game you want to restore so that you don't have to leave the game room, try to get people to join, etc. 
Instead, everyone will stay in the room after a desync and join the saved game, which is a far better system. The next will say, Watch Recording, which will let you watch a recording with friends, making co-casting old games far easier than to try to synchronize things like you have to do in HD at the moment. The last new button will be the all-important spectator settings, where you can set how players join the room, give or revoke player controls, allow to bar spectators from joining an in-progress game, and to create a spec delay. And so, look at this, we have a game room that combines both the ease of use of HD with all the settings and features of Vubly, making it, in my opinion, a far better design. However, there's one thing we need to add, which is to integrate the lobby browser into the game room. Let me explain what I mean. Suppose you join a game on HD. You'll notice that you have no way of seeing what other games are going on without leaving the game room. This is bad because maybe I'm thinking about joining another game, but I want to wait for this one to start, and it just doesn't really work on HD. On Vubly, on the other hand, you can do both at once. I think that AoE 2 DE should have a similar system to Vubly. Maybe have a menu button on the top right of the game room that opens up a pop-up menu, where you can view other game rooms, or maybe change what texture pack you're using, or just something like that. And so, I think we're done. We've created a lobby browser system that combines the good aspects of both Vubly and HD, and we've also created a game room that's concise and simple to use, yet does not lack major features. In closing, I hope that the ideas behind my pitch for the lobby system will make it into the game, and as a result, allow the multiplayer of the game to be vastly successful. I hope that whoever you are, be it a casual player, an AOE2 DE designer, or a Microsoft executive, that you will consider and analyze my ideas and my advice. Anyways, that's all for now. I'm just dying to finally be able to play AOE2 DE. I'll see you then. Bye.